On this week's Cold Boot, we're discussing Intel outsourcing their chip manufacturing, Microsoft validating older CPUs for use with Windows 11, President Biden taking notice of right to repair, and lastly, the GPU situation looks like it could be getting better. Let's hit that power button. It's time to Cold Boot. Before we dive into this week's video, I'd like to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, VIP SCD Key. Looking for Windows 10 Pro? Visit VIP-SCDKey.com and search Windows 10. Choose Windows 10 Pro and click Buy Now. Make sure not to skip the part where you get 20% off by using code TECHY at checkout. That's T-E-C-H-Y. Check My Purchased Orders in the User Center to retrieve your key. Yep, I've personally been using SCD Key since way before they became a channel sponsor. You could say we go way back. VIP SCD Key has a full suite of Microsoft Windows and Office keys as well as game keys from Steam, Origin, Uplay, even PlayStation Store cards as well as Steam, iTunes, and Nintendo Store cards. I see you eyeing my Windows Insider build of Windows 11. You know what you need to get the free Windows 11 upgrade this winter? An activated copy of Windows 10. Pick up your Windows key today for a free upgrade to Windows 11 this fall at vip-scdkey.com using promo code TECHIE for 20% off. Welcome back. It's Poe back again with Let's Get Techie. On the first partition of today's episode, we're taking a look at Intel's decision to outsource some of their chip production to TSMC. This is noteworthy because Intel is one of the few chip designers that own their own fabrication plants. When you think of the other big chip makers like AMD, NVIDIA, and Apple, most people probably assume these companies make their own chips, but this work is actually contracted out to companies like TSMC. The company designs and then sends that design to their partner for production. Intel, on the other hand, historically has produced the majority of their chips in-house with their own fabrication plants, with some exceptions, of course. Intel has decided for some of their upcoming products in 2023, they'll use global chip manufacturer TSMC to produce three nanometer chips for data center products and some notebooks. This comes right on the heels of Intel announcing a $20 billion investment to build two chip production facilities in Arizona. This begs the question, if they're building new foundries, then why are they outsourcing? Well, there's a few reasons for this. First, building a chip fab isn't an overnight thing. This will take Intel years to get up and running. Additionally, according to Intel, these two new fabs seem more like they'll be used to produce chips for other companies, just like how TSMC is going to produce chips for Intel. Lastly, if we're being honest, Intel has done a horrific job with the timeline of their roadmap over the last five years. They've been stuck on their 14 nanometer node since 2013, with their 10 nanometer node being an utter disaster. It's likely that Intel realizes if they want to be competitive, they need to at least outsource some of their production while they get back on track in the engineering department. Many will look at this as a failure, but personally, I think it's a good move. I've been telling my friends for years now that Intel needed to swallow their pride and outsource some production to get back on track. They didn't take my advice, of course, and now look who's leading in performance, AMD. Like previously mentioned, according to reports, it seems Intel is going to use TSMC at least initially for data center products and some notebook chips. This will free up their own fabs to produce consumer level chips such as their high performance desktop lineup. Hopefully this will get them back on track and competitive with AMD, which would be great for consumers. The last thing I want to mention is something that's just a guess on my part and wasn't mentioned in any articles on this topic. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw some of this TSMC 3 nanometer capacity purchased by Intel end up going to future Intel GPUs. We already know Intel's using TSMC 7 nanometer node for their upcoming DG2 desktop graphics cards. I would say if those cards pan out and the whole GPU division doesn't die off like it did the last time Intel tried to make video cards, we could very well see the next generation made on TSMC's 3 nanometer node. On the second partition of today's cold boot, it appears as though Microsoft is attempting to walk back at least some of their stringent requirements for Windows 11. Initially, Microsoft had set the cutoff for CPUs at Intel's 8th generation, we use the word generation lightly here, and AMD's 2000 series. After feedback from the community, Microsoft is now validating 7th generation from Intel and AMD Ryzen 1000 series for use with Windows 11. This seemed like an arbitrary cutoff since Intel's 7th and 8th generation are virtually identical and were released just 12 months apart from each other. 
It turns out this decision may not be as arbitrary as initially thought though. I'm going to link a video in the description from a channel called The Friday Checkout where he explains the reason Microsoft chose to exclude older CPUs. If you have a chance to watch it, we highly recommend it. I think if Microsoft can support older CPUs, they should. I understand them not wanting older CPUs to go from Windows 10 to Windows 11 and actually have slower performance, but I say let the consumer choose. Give a rollback option just like they do now with all of their updates and if a customer updates and doesn't like the new OS or has poor performance due to older hardware, they can just roll back. Heck, they can even put a disclaimer on certain hardware during upgrade that says something like, hey bro, you sure you want to do this? On the third partition of today's episode, we're discussing right to repair. Right to Repair is a movement that repairer Lewis Rossman has been pushing for years now. He owns a repair shop in New York and has been drawing attention to the fact that Apple and other manufacturers over the years have made it increasingly difficult to repair their devices and almost impossible for third-party repairers or customers themselves. I've replaced a few phone screens myself and while it's not the most fun thing in the world, it can save you quite a bit of money over sending it in to the manufacturer to have it repaired. Apple and others have made it increasingly difficult to make repairs like this yourself, and thanks to Lewis and many others, this issue has finally made it all the way to the top. Right after the country celebrated its independence, President Biden announced that he will direct the FTC to draft rules in hopes of stopping companies from limiting consumers from repairing their own devices or having third parties repair their devices. Keep in mind, we aren't just talking about cell phones here. This extends all the way to companies like John Deere who have locked down their newer farm equipment with software that makes it almost impossible to work on them yourself. Companies like Apple and John Deere claim that they are doing this for consumer safety, but the FTC stated in a report to Congress earlier this year that this claim was basically garbage and the company's claims had no merit. This is likely what spurred Biden to ask the FTC to draft these new rules. And on Friday, he actually put that request in an executive order. This is a great first step to finally owning your MacBook Pro and actually being able to repair it without having to pay Apple's exuberant repair costs. Let us know down in the comments if you think this will actually lead to some meaningful legislation or if you think it's dead on arrival. On the last partition of today's episode, we're taking a look at the sad state of affairs in the video card market. After months and months of crypto mining firms buying up as many cards as they can get their hands on, there may finally be light at the end of the tunnel. Several reports are now stating that Chinese miners are dumping mining cards for cheap online and that new cards are starting to come down in price as well. Now curb your expectations because we still aren't talking original MSRP here, but at least it's something. According to reporting from Tech Radar, one European retailer saw prices of Nvidia cards at over 300% MSRP in May. That has now fallen to 91% over MSRP for the month of June. For those of you who are math impaired like my wife, that means you're still looking at paying double MSRP. The same retailer saw AMD cards at 77% over MSRP. Having said that, I think this is a good sign that things are starting to trend in the right direction. If mining continues its downward trend, we will see more cards flooding the secondhand market. And while that may or may not be a good buy, depending on how hard the particular card was ran, an abundance of used cards on the market will ultimately push pricing down on the new cards as well. Let us know down in the comments if you would take your chances with a card that was used for mining. One quick story that I hadn't initially wanted to cover. There's a new Nintendo Switch. It's got a larger OLED screen, an Ethernet port, and double the storage. If you already have a Switch, don't buy it quickest story in cold boot history. And unfortunately, that's going to do it for this week's episode. Drop a comment below and let us know if you think Intel's decision to outsource some of their products to TSMC will help them get back on track in the performance desktop market. We're curious what others think on this one. If you enjoyed this week's episode, please hit that like button as it really helps the channel. Also, if you aren't already subscribed, we'd love for you to join our little tech community and help build it into something great. And don't forget to click the bell icon so you get notified when our next video goes live. We appreciate you watching, and we will see you in the next one.